It is the most dreaded terrorist organization in Afghanistan. They are believed to be the masterminds of brutal attacks that have killed and injured scores of Afghans and foreign nationals. One of their top leaders is wanted by the FBI. Another was sentenced to death by the Afghan government but later released as part of a barter deal. They are a designated terrorist group under sanctions from the United Nations. Yet, they are now part of an interim government in Afghanistan. Yes, we are talking about the Haqqani Network. What may shock the world is a reality for hapless Afghans. The ruthless Haqqani Network is now part of the hardline Afghanistan government. Their leader, Sirajuddin Haqqani, is now the country's interior minister. His uncle Khalil is the minister for refugees. So who are the Haqqanis? The ferocious Haqqani network was founded by Jalaluddin Haqqani, who was the hero of the resistance against the Soviets in the 1980s. He was a valuable CIA asset and was used by the US and Pakistan to send arms and money to the Mujahideen. At the time, it suited the US to mount an anti-Soviet front. But after the Soviet invasion ended, Haqqani developed close ties to the Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. He was part of the earlier Taliban regime and served as a minister until they were toppled by the US-led forces in 2001. Now, after his death in 2018, his son Sirajuddin became the network chief. Sirajuddin is believed to be even more extreme than his father. He is, in fact, wanted by the FBI in the 2008 bombing of the Serena Hotel in Kabul. His younger brother, Anas Haqqani, senior with former Afghan President Hamid Karzai, was part of negotiations for a Taliban-led government. Now, interestingly, he was imprisoned and sentenced to death by the Afghan government in 2008, but later released. Their uncle, Khalil Haqqani, now the Minister of Refugees, is also designated by the US as a global terrorist with a bounty of $5 million. What have the Haqqanis done to bring such infamy? The Haqqani network has been accused of assassinations, including an attempt on former President Hamid Karzai's life in 2008, kidnappings of officials and Western citizens for ransom, and suicide bombings. The network was behind two major suicide bombings in 2008 and 2009 against the Indian Embassy in Kabul, in which 70 people died. They were the masterminds of the attack on the Kabul Intercontinental Hotel in 2011. Hence, their sudden rise to power is now causing a great deal of worry to India. In our own immediate neighborhood, ISIL Khorasan has become more energetic and is constantly seeking to expand its footprint. This should be taken seriously. Events unfolding in Afghanistan have naturally enhanced global concerns about their implications for both regional and international security. The heightened activities of the prescribed Haqqani network justifies this growing uh, anxiety. The network has often been called the creation of the ISI. The Haqqanis, who are based mainly in eastern Afghanistan, reportedly have their bases in Pakistan's North Waziristan and have been supported by Islamabad for many years. A fact that was confirmed by the US Admiral Mike Mullen in 2011, who described them as a veritable arm of Islamabad's intelligence. He said, and I quote, we have credible evidence that they were behind the June 20th attack against the Intercontinental Hotel in Kabul and a host of other smaller but effective operations. In short, the Haqqani network acts as a veritable arm of Pakistan's inter-services intelligence agency. Now, recent reports of the Pakistan spy chief, Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid in Kabul, have confirmed the ISI's deep links to the Haqqanis. Hamid was reportedly in Kabul to break up a fight between Mullah Baradar and Anas Haqqani over control of the new government. Pakistan wanted to ensure births for the Haqqanis, whom they have nurtured for years in the new Kabul regime, a task that has been accomplished well now. A movement that grew in the shadows has now emerged to challenge world powers. The appointment of a US designated terrorist as the country's interior minister is seen as a deliberate attempt by the Taliban and their masters in Pakistan to snub the US. As the world calibrates its response to the sudden shift in Afghanistan's power structure, Pakistan will have its hands full dealing with warring factions that may be extremely difficult to control.